Now, Frederick is going to uh, talk a little bit less about data, although he's processing data on, uh, with GeoFabric every day. Uh, it's nice to talk uh, on something else than just data. So, Frederick, the uh, floor is yours. Hello. Uh, okay, I'll try to make this quick because I know we all want to have a coffee break. So, we have this great map, uh, obviously made from data, uh, which resides on servers, but the data is made by humans, people like us. Um, now, we call that, that, that's the community. That's our community who does the maps. Community implies they're doing something together, but not necessarily just because lots of people are working on something similar. Doesn't actually mean they do something together like the people in this image. So, yes, there are many people in OpenStreetMap who are social, who do maps together, who work on the project together. For example, um, people doing mapping parties, this is from the Netherlands, or pub meets, um, which sometimes are, this is actually from the, a mapping party, but looks like a pub meet, so uh, it's, wow. Uh, uh, we have been discussing these things. Uh, but not only, not only do people meet and do mapping together, they also meet online and, and do things together. For example, this is a thread that you don't have to understand what they say. It's a, it's a thread that has like, 20 pages on the German forum where they discuss international admin boundaries. And whenever you break an admin boundary, recently someone broke the Chile admin boundary by, I don't know, breaking something. Uh, a couple hours later, someone pops up in this forum and says, hey, I found this bug, hey, what, what happened? And then five people discuss this and fix it somehow. So there's, there's a small group of people here concerned with a special topic, uh, international admin boundaries, and they, if, you fix, if you break something, then they will fix it. These things are a uh, social endeavor, right? There's many people in OpenStreetMap who do things socially together. Um, those people, however, are certainly not the majority in OpenStreetMap. They're just a group, small group. Many, many other people in OpenStreetMap do not really interact socially. It's a bit like the long tail that uh, Harry had in his talk. It's perhaps not identical, but there might be a tendency that those are the people on the long tail who do not talk to each other very much and, and just do things. This is not to scale, and there's no scientific evidence whatsoever, no numbers, it's all just made up, um, but it's, I, I think it's about right. Many people in this, uh, in, in this large group are actually like this lone hacker here and they sit at home and don't work with others. That might be called asocial, it's not asocial, huh? it's, not, um, it's not bad. Uh, I don't want to attach a value to, to that at all or, or any negative meaning. I myself have spent countless hours uh, just mindlessly uh, tracing aerial imagery while watching TV or something. It's, it's not, ne not necessary that you always have to, to do something together with others. And we also have to, to, to keep in mind that doing something together with others is for many people also a very uh, taxing and, and, and takes lots, lots of their energy, right? Sometimes it's nice, and there's a very nice thing on the web, I encourage you, encourage you to look it up. It's called Dr. Kermela's Guide to Understanding the Introverted. And that's a nice cartoon where it says, introverted people, they live in a kind of bubble and whenever they have to interact with others, it costs them energy. It doesn't give them energy, it costs them energy. And there might be very well lots of introverted people among these open street map mappers, and we're still happy that they contribute something, and we don't want to force them. We, we don't want to say, hey, you have to interact more. You have to talk to others. This is a social project. It's OK. Um, it might be nice to have a little bit more, but it doesn't have to be. Now, these, uh, yeah. these, people are not, these people are not a problem. They do sometimes cause problems by breaking something and not talking with others. And then it has to be fixed. But it's not because they're evil or stupid, it just, it just happens and it's often, often lack of communications. Um, 
Sometimes they want to help us by importing a shapefile that they found somewhere and they don't talk to anyone and say, oh, I import this because it's easy. And then someone says, well, you, maybe you should have talked to someone before that. But mostly they're friendly and, and we can deal with them. Now, of course, some of you will have asked themselves why I had this little piece left open uh, in the bottom. And that is, of course, for a couple of people who are really bad. Um, Maybe, maybe a bit like these. Uh, uh, careful, otherwise they eat your brain. Uh, uh, a a some very small uh, group of antisocial people who actually um, who, who actively uh, act against the, the social norms and rules that we have in OpenStreetMap, right? Um, <laughs> again, um, this is not quite correct because, as you know, zombies have no brains and therefore they are not responsible for their actions. Whereas the people I'm talking about are, well, they're a mixed bunch. Sometimes they might not be responsible for their actions, but, but they, most of them certainly are. So why would, why would people act against uh, what, what we do in OpenStreetMap? Why, why would they um, harm the project or, or violate our, the, the norms that we have? <clears throat> One reason is a certain, um, certainly um, nationalists people who make changes to OpenStreetMap because they believe in some kind of uh, politic, uh, political m mindset. Uh, one example is, for example, uh, certain groups uh, of islands in the South China Sea, which, as you can see here, um, this, uh, this boundary has been edited like 62 times, and it's not really, um, it doesn't really change that often. <laughs> Uh, in reality, it's just that uh, China claims a group of islands and other nations claim the same group of islands, so people have added wars about how to name it and so on. I read that, that until a couple of years ago there, there was also uh, a dispute between Argentina and I think Brazil about some areas, but I think meanwhile this, this place in the world is, is quieter. But yeah, there are, there are these people who always make changes to, or also in, in Serbia, Kosovo, some places in Europe where, uh, where people always want to change the borders and change the languages and so on without trying to find a consensus on that. Um, another thing that we have is people who just want to do something funny, uh, maybe teenagers having beer, and then this ends, in, uh, ends up with penis-shaped land use uh, drawings on OpenStreetMap. I mean, that's not, they, not act, they, they don't want to harm OpenStreetMap, but still, I mean, if you, if you have to clean up after them, it's not, it's not nice. Um, there are also mappers uh, who are very, very single-minded uh, mappers who, who don't care for anything in OpenStreetMap but their own hobby horse, their own, well, I, I will want to fix the cycle maps, uh, the, the, the cycleways in the city, uh, no matter what else I break or something. Uh, those can be a problem. And the biggest problem that we have to deal with in data working group is actually um, people who believe that they are always right and the others are always wrong. And who these are often people who have invested lots of time in OpenStreetMap and have contributed to their local map a lot. Um, and now other people come, come up and start editing in their area. And then these people go, oh, that's my map. Um, you can't edit here. You have to ask me before you do. And of course, that's against the, the spirit that we have in OpenStreetMap. And a data working group has, um, often has some work to do trying to convince, because we don't want to lose these people. We don't really want to kick them out. We don't want to say, you know, you have to go um, because you're antisocial. Um, anti we want to get them to become social or at least accept that there, there are others in the project. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes they will just leave. So that's the thing about those few people there in the corner. Um, they have to be dealt with. Currently it's done by data working group and some people imagine that data working group would be uh, a couple of these nice folks from Germany. Uh, in fact, the day-to-day -day work in data working group looks more like this uh, shoveling manure. Um, I, would, I would like Data Working Group to be like this, where we have lots of cool power tools at our disposal, and we just say, okay, now highlight this, now show me what, what has this person done before. Okay, well, blah, blah, blah. but um, yeah, 
we, if, uh, we still require some software development until we're there. Currently, uh, we're more at this stage. If you, if you want to help out with Data Working Group, email us and we'll find a fork for you and you can also contribute in shoveling the new. So that's about these people. Um, can we do something about the, uh, the asocial majority in OpenStreetMap? Can we maybe, as I said, we don't want to force them to become social, but maybe we could entice them, maybe we could offer them some more things to get involved, uh, to talk to others, to do things together. And it turns out it has been done before, it has been done all the time. Uh, lots of things are, are tried out. This um, is a tweet that was sent in 2009 from the um, Potlatch editor. At the time, uh, Richard built this feature into Potlatch where you, when, whenever you edited something, you could actually tweet about your edit and say, hey, great, I just edited OpenStreetMap. Nah, nah, nah. Um, this idea didn't quite catch on, uh, but it was nice. It, it was a nice try. We, we, we often try things a couple of times before we get things right. This is a screenshot, a very old screenshot also from an, an editor called MapZen, no relation to MapZen, the company. Um, this editor was created by CloudMade when they were still interested in OpenStreetMap. And um, this was actually uh, built into a social platform that they had set up. So you would register with their maps and platform, and then you would see activities from your friends, and you, you would be able to, to sort of send them messages about stuff that you have just mapped and so on. So not a bad idea, really. Um, it's called the, the maps and dashboard, I believe. Of course, it's, it's all dead now. Uh, it's just an old screenshot. Or uh, social activities like Operation Cowboy, where a couple of German mappers thought, oh, those poor guys in, in the US, they have no proper mappers, and they have all these bad tiger data, so let's help them. And let's have this great operation where we all do some uh, couch, surfing, couch mapping, armchair mapping, and uh, fix tiger stuff. It was, it was a bit over the top, maybe, but but um, it was quite funny, and there were lots of people uh, in Germany and around the world who contributed to editing Tiger stuff in the US. And it was at a specific time, so it was on a weekend. So it, even though you can armchair map at any time, of course, uh, by simply selecting a time and saying, okay, let's all sit on, on our armchairs together and map this, um, that was quite, it was quite nice. Uh, also uh, a nice activity that might entice some people to become social. A uh, new thing that, or well, it's about a year old or something, is a chat feature that has been built into the JOSM editor, where you can, uh, when, when you edit in JOSM, then you can see uh, if there are other editors working nearby currently, having JOSM open in that area, and you can chat to them. It hasn't quite caught on very much. It's used locally, and some, for, I, I heard that it's often used by, by HOT, for example, when, when they do things. Uh, because they have many people editing at the same same area at the same time, but it's also interesting and, and a nice feature that might get people uh, more engaged. Um, we have just launched a couple of days ago the change that comment feature, where uh, you can actually, um, when when a change that has been committed to OpenStreetMap, then you can add a comment to it and can say, oh, yeah, well, uh, this was a good idea, or maybe this should have been differently, um, and so on. So that's also something that hopefully. Uh, helps to weave people more together. Finally, I want to mention the groups feature. Uh, have, I don't have a screenshot for that because it's really a very evasive thing. It has been talked about lots and lots. Um, we would like to have something in OpenStreetMap where people can get together in groups on, on the website and say, okay, I belong to the railway enthusiasts group or the, um, I don't know, classic churches in Bolivia group or whatever something. Uh, and then you can see what, what your friends or what, what the other people in the same group are doing. You can maybe have a kind of dashboard um, where people have been, um, where, where see what other people in your group have been doing and work together on small things. And I've just listed a couple of names who, people who have been involved in this in one way or the other. Martine has actually had a talk in San Francisco. I think it was, I think it was called the dashboard something also, OSM dashboard. Which, so he didn't call it the group feature, he called it the dashboard. But the idea was also to have some kind of see what your friends have been doing and so on. Um, Mikhail Serge, uh, Richard Ferris have been involved. 
uh, Salmon at Mapbox has actually done some, uh, some mock-ups how things could look like, um, or maybe even without the group thing, just, just to get people more involved without actually saying, I want to belong to that group. So there are some ideas there. Um, um, there's Drew from, uh, now from Mapson. Many more people have been thinking about this. It's not something that has really materialized yet, something that we still need to work on, but I have high hopes that this will also help uh, to bring a couple more people together to, to, say, to, to say, okay, I, we work on this mapping project together. So that's going to be a nice thing, hopefully. And I, my hope is that we will be able to sort of extend this bit, this, uh, this corner of people who do something socially. It will never cover everyone. Uh, it's, it's like, like Harry said in his long tail thing, uh, there will always be uh, people who just don't want to or don't care or just want to make a single edit, and that's okay. Nobody has to force them. But if we can just make it a little bit more attractive, uh, I think that will benefit the problem. And of course, we want to keep the small red area as small as possible. I think that's already it. Um, if you have any questions about this or about data working group or something, ask now. Well, or please, oh sorry, I was at, or please uh, do it over coffee. Um, so we can kind of gently catch up a little bit on time. Um, Alex. Thanks for the presentation, Fred, and thanks for all the hard work that you're doing on the uh, data working group. Um, so to get from like the manure picture to the mission Im impossible picture, what what do you need? You know, in terms of in terms of people who could help in the in the data working group, but also in terms of tools. In terms of tools, uh, one thing that I would really love to have uh, for data working group uh, stuff is uh, a notification feature that would allow us to. Um, to set up uh, certain conditions and say, alert us when this happens. For example, when we have just banned someone who was making adverse edits in certain areas in China. And so we have banned him, and we would like to know um, if a new user pops up in that area making similar changes. So that would be a condition like, user needs to be registered within the last couple of days, uh, user needs to edit mostly so-and-so tags or user needs to make mostly deletions or something. Um, then certain, certain things were, uh, well, uh, some work has been done in vandalism detection already, but um, we could really use a, a proper fine-grained tool that's saying, okay, if someone pops up and makes lots of deletions, uh, things like that. Um, there's the, the, the notify thing is, would, would really be interesting and helpful. Um, very much so for data working group. I mean, we can, to a certain degree, write these things ourselves, doing uh, some run a Python script on the diffs that we download, but it, it would be great if we had a platform that could be used by people who are not uh, technical wizards, who could just say, okay, I would like to monitor this condition. And there are some monitoring platforms already, like who, who did it and so on but they are generally just tied to an area. So you can say, I want to say, see anything that happens in this area, and that's just information overload. Uh, you can do that if you want to follow your own city or, or, or your own local place, but you can't do something like, whenever someone starts making name changes in Germany, I want to be notified or something, and that would really be the kind of tool that, that we would like to have. It's a simple fact that quite a lot of areas of the world there are disputed frontiers. Uh, I was just questioning whether there are just a set of rules or whether there's a neutral way in which OpenStreetMap can deal with this because the people on either side of the dispute will feel very passionately about it. Um, and I just wondered if there is a way uh, that it doesn't be so, so simply become hostile editing one way and the other. Yes, technically, um, we, we, have, we have the situation in a, in a simpler form with names, people uh, discussing whether the name should be in Turkish or in Greek or something, and, and that's 
that can be solved and, and I can see a solution at the horizon uh, at the time when we switch to uh, some kind of vector mapping for the OpenStreetMap map because then we can just say, okay, if your browser is set to Argentinian, uh, to, to, to Spanish, then uh, all labels will be in Spanish and if your browser is set to Turkish, then all the labels will be in Turkish and there's that, then you don't have to ha have this fight anymore. The next thing would actually be to be able to draw boundaries differently and to say, okay, if you are from Turkey, then your, bound, your boundary looks like this, and if you're from Greece, then your boundary looks differently. Google Maps does this already. Uh, depending on where you are from, uh, the Google Map will look differently, and I think that in the long run we'll be doing something similar. With the, lang with the names, we already have the capability of recording the different names. It's just the displaying that we just can't do at the moment on the OSM web page. And with the boundaries, it's really, we don't really have a good mapping uh, uh, tagging scheme at the moment. We can say this boundary is disputed, but we can't really say, well, the Turkish view is this and the Greek view is that, but I'm sure something will, be, will emerge and we will be able to draw the world in whatever fashion people want. For example, the Islas Malvinas, yes. Um, Anyone else wants something to know, wants to know something, catch me outside in the coffee break uh, so we can cut this short here and... Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, absolutely. Yeah.